something went on here, something went on there. And this time on TNT. We play a brand new game called ViewTube or Canadianity Counts. We find out what happened with the Hat Man in Las Vegas. And we check out some of Burton Cummings' new track, hot off the presses of his Facebook page. That's all coming up right now on TNT. 60, we're rolling. 60's how we do it. <laughs> Why? Oh, I didn't do the fill. Oh, Sorry. do it for me, will you? 60's yeah, how yeah. we do it. Bakadoom beat. You were late. Well, 60's how we do it. Bakadoom beat. <laughs> You're late. Wrong? How am I late? Maybe the You sing it and I'll do it. This is how we do Back it. Doom. No, man, you're, you're <laughs> late now. <laughs> is there a delay? <laughs> do it. Do it. Sing it again. <laughs> you're doing it on like the one. You're waiting till the downbeat. I'm doing it into the downbeat. It's just always. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you ready? 60s, how we do it. Back it doom. That's late. <laughs> That's late. <laughs> there must be a delay in the phone. That's the best. That's late. That's exactly. Because <laughs> if I do it, it, like I will do my part and your part. This is how it sounds to me. Six is how we do it. Back, Back of doom. doom. Why are you doing that? Why It's on the end of four. It's one, two, three, Back four. Back of doom. This is how we do back a doom. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's on the end of four, so it's three, four, ack a doom. <laughs> You're just like bringing in the beat, but it's got to come in before the one. I know. This is how yeah. we do back a doom. Yeah, there you go. When you do it yourself, it's fine. I know. So why is there a delay when you do it? <laughs> I don't know. Do, do you sing it one more time for me. <laughs> Me? Yeah. With the beat, this is how we do it. Back to doom. All right, so that's late. Right. right? See how vulnerable you feel when the I other guy doesn't jump in with the back of doom? Because it, it happens on the vocal. You feel very vulnerable when the other guy doesn't jump in with the beat for you. <laughs> I let you hang there. I felt so naky. This is how we do it. Back of doom. That's where it is. <clears throat> oh, you're adding it late. Now you're going late. Back of doom. And sometimes there's a back of doom. It's on, it's on it. I want to meet two people in the world. I want to meet what? the person who works at Hyundai that said, guys, I think we should get This Is How We Do It for the Hyundai commercial. And then I want to meet the guy who said, that's a great idea. I have, I have a feeling that that song is like all over the place in commercials anyway, isn't it? I don't think I've ever heard it in a commercial before. <laughs> no, the major really? Hyundai campaign. And for and No, for anything, though. No. For like chewing gum or i don't think i've ever heard it <laughs> no maybe there comes a time when a song is old enough that suddenly it's like oh yeah member once it hits the member phase then it's kind of good because it's retro and that means cheap too you know what i mean so it, it yeah exactly i hear you Back I, don't know, I, don't, I don't even know what kind of uh campaign it's for or what it would work for other than hondai but uh, it's it, it's pretty much one of those songs where it's like whenever you're doing anything, it picks it up a notch. It kind of does. It's like genuine pony, like <laughs> building a bed at IKEA. Yeah, and I would say let your backbone slide is in that kind of realm too. Like for a Canadian ad, for why Canadian. hasn't backbone been used for like um, <laughs> Sleep Country Canada? <laughs> <laughs> or for like shoveling your driveway, yeah, like really going for it, like right on the nose, or um, like a massage clinic. <laughs> I'm excited about the game we're going to play today, bot. <laughs> we got a good game. Yeah, it's called Canadianity Counts. Yeah, it's on good. YouTube. Um, it's good. It's Canadian. Yeah. It's unique. We kind of alluded to it last week when that perv and I were sharing a room in Vegas. Never saw him again. <laughs> Um, the hat remained in the room, just in case he came back. Um, yeah, what a tale. Oh, and for those wondering... We're talking about these, these skirted egg Pete Rose haired, like long at the back, but all thick at the back. Yeah. 
My favorite correspondence from a listener the crimped hair. <laughs> was a guy saying, I couldn't concentrate on folding my laundry listening to 59 because I was so <laughs> tense thinking the guy with the hat was going to walk in any minute. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, don't you- that would have been incredible. <laughs> Don't you want to like hope it's like Gerard Depardieu hair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but matted down, headband yeah, styles. Like really thick, but like at the back, almost like mo hair, but <clears throat> nothing on top. Like baby fine hair. No, like thick, like Pete Rose in his heyday. <laughs> oh yeah, like rug hair, <laughs> like Shakespearean wig hair. Yeah, but just at the back. Wig hair. That's he saw was all crimped around the back of his ears and the back of his head. Brutal. <laughs> hey, for people that like... um, Quicksilver. Trying to like... His kid, he's like 59. If you look at the front of that baseball hat, it was frayed. That was not a new hat that he got at the Vegas outlet. When he's nervous at the table. He's always he's rubbing up in the brim. <laughs> Gross. It's got some styling gel and cigar juice on it. <laughs> For those wondering, the intimacy kit was twenty eight dollars US. That's awesome. Someone sent us a picture of one in Toronto that was I think ten bucks, but it didn't have the towelettes and it didn't have the breath mints. <laughs> the breath mints. So <laughs> gross. The the crunch crunch crunch. Thanks a lot, baby. That's good stuff. Crunch crunch crunch. So, um, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> right, right. When he's done, turns gross. into a big asshole. Fires a breathman in for the kiss on the cheek. What? Fires a breathman in for the kiss on the cheek. Where you go? <laughs> right before he's done, he's all like, "It's been a pleasure of my life." Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was a great pleasure of my life. <laughs> Meeting your acquaintance. And then he's done. And he's like, crunch, 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 cut the hell out of here. Why would he care about his breath being fresh then? He's because he paid the 28 bucks. Oh, my gosh. Just because it's spent and he just feels like he needs a fresh up. He gives her the brush breath mint as a courtesy to her next no, he suitor. That's just them both. Oh, what a jerk. <laughs> okay, he turns and like goes all... All sweet. He's like, hey, look, there's two breath mints here. That's good because my breath is extra rank. (laughs) Get the fuck out of here. Wow. Come on, honey. Get get your stuff and go. Um, Here's a bit of trivia for folks that like (laughs) uh, Trailer Park Boys. I was growing my hair long in the last couple years because I wanted to have cornrows on Trailer Park. And. (laughs) The problem was the trailer park schedule changed and it then overlapped with Mr. D. So I couldn't have cornrows uh, as a vice principal on Mr. D because they were both shooting at the same time. So there's yeah. one scene in trailer park where I'd already gotten, it was the last scene I shot for season nine yeah. and I'd already gotten a haircut for Mr. D so it wouldn't match. So they actually used a wig, like a blonde wig to match my long hair. And it's the scene where McFlurry's getting off the bus to go to school, and I say, yeah, but how big is that teacher's badonka donk What? <laughs> you have a wig on. Yeah, I have a wig on. A wig hair. <laughs> and if you see it, now that you know that, you can tell it's a wig. But yeah. unfortunately, not enough people can tell it's a wig, which is a real sign that my flow is out of control. <laughs> Six is how we do. Back a doom. I think it's pretty awesome that you were doing it. Wearing a wig? With the wig on, and then even if you know. Yeah, um, and Mike Smith, who plays Bubble, said, can you do the longest, huh, you can even imagine? <laughs> so it goes like, hey, how big's that badonga now, though? <laughs> it's a oh good four seconds, and I it made me lose my voice. Okay, do you want to you want to play Canadianity Count? Yes, I do. So the rules are very simple. He, here's, I was thinking about this. I think you need to tell me the exact search phrase. So, for example, Juno's 1970 is less specific than Howie okay. Mandel Juno monologue. You know what I mean? You have to tell me the exact words that you searched in the little YouTube search bar because I think that could be different, right? 
It is, but it's also the name sometimes of the th- of the answer. You know what I mean? Right. In the search. Right. With the year. So, <clears throat> bottom line, uh, I can give you a era. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And genre like music or TV. Okay. Okay. So you're not going to tell me what it is? No, no. You're going to have to kind of oh, guess. Oh my just gosh. By the vibe. Okay. It's kind of adds to the game as well as yeah. You're right. The, it's the a game and a game. And then at the, and at the end, you can guess the count, or you can count the guess the count anytime. I guess. Okay. So I have to this guess what pick. this is. Yes. Okay. Just to add it up. Okay, here we go. This uh, TV in the area era is uh, early '80s, late '70s, early '80s. Oh boy. Okay. okay. Breadcrumbs. Just check and make sure everything's okay. Welcome. Nice to see you, and I'm glad to see you at home. I hope you're okay. Wayne and Schuster. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, was, it was Bruno Gerussi's cooking show. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Remember that show, Celebrity Cooking yes. Bruno Gerussi? Oh, my gosh. Isn't that classic? I thought I could hear two voices in there, and I, I yeah. swung for the fences. <clears throat> It's definitely tough when you're listening to to guess that, but Bruno uh, Gerussi's that... cooking show has twenty two thousand views, seventeen thousand views. Oh, not bad. Yeah, um, not bad. Let's take a break on TNT because I have to grab this call real quick. All right, we'll be right back. Would you like some egg and beans? Fuck off! You're not my mom. And we're back. My wife's brother calling on the phone, bud. Everything's cool. All set. Yep, we're good. I just knew if I didn't answer it, uh, the phone might ring again, and I wanted to nip that in the bud. You know what I mean? I hear you. I hear you. Um, uh, Bru- who would have been the guests on Bruno Gerussi's Celebrity Cooking? Oh, there's tons. Andy Kaufman was one of the Come most on. famous ones. Come on. Yeah. I think that Bob, like Bob... Uh, Newhart? Bob Crane, Bob Crane was on there. Remember like that everybody. Time? Yeah. Everybody yeah. of the time. Okay, uh, <clears throat> did you tell the story about Bruno Gerussi and a glass of pee? <laughs> Bruno Gerussi and a glass of pee? Yeah. What is that? There was some story about <laughs> they were shooting a commercial for something, and I can't remember why there was a glass of pee, but he <laughs> thought it was apple juice and he had a drink of it. Terrible story, <laughs> awfully told, but someone told That's, me a story about no. that once. That's a true story? Well. Wow. I mean, there's nothing in the way that I told it to suggest it is, but I remember someone telling me something along those lines over the years. Yeah, over the years, but Bruno Gerussi? Bruno Gerussi and a glass of pee. (laughs) There you go. All right, what's the second Canadian that he counts? There's a story about that with... But it's a little different from what I remember. What? Was it a glass of poo? (laughs) A glass of pee, Yeah. No. Well, I mean, there's a there's a couple. There's one I heard about a band from Winnipeg, and they were used to prank each other, and one guy pissed into a beer bottle on stage, <gasps> and put it on the stage, <laughs> and the bass player like went went and chugged half of it. No. It was, yeah, one of his beers, and he literally jumped onto the drum kit during the show. To no. Yeah, like the jump <laughs> through the symbols and everything to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a cross the line hit. <laughs> That's so bad. You can never open a prank war with someone <laughs> because it's not going to end well for anybody. <laughs> he just went right ass over tea kettle towards him. <laughs> During the show, probably had the bass on him still. <laughs> <laughs> Crash tests? No. <laughs> Wide no, mouth Mason? Like an, <clears throat> no. They were more <laughs> an indie band. I think. I think they were Chocolate Bunnies from Hell. I think was the band band name. Oh punk, my gosh! Band, but they're hardcore dudes. <laughs> oh my gosh! I would be so mad. <clears throat> Like, come on, dude. <laughs> but if they're at that level of, like, biker pranks, 
You know what I mean? If that's just normal. That's awful. <laughs> Biker pranks. Leaving a pig in someone's house for two weeks while they're away. That's the story of uh, Kevin Meekle, our old tour manager. Still had these friends when, in Calgary that were just like, I guess they were either bikers or that level, but that's the kind of pranks they would do on each other. Leave a pig in your house? Leave a live pig <laughs> to run around and destroy the guy's whole house. Oh Shitting everywhere, chewing everything up. <laughs> it's so... The guy gets home, he's like, oh, you bastard, you got me. It's so simple, but so effective. <laughs> and I think the other guy, like, put, you know, that stuff, I think it was a, this caulking, like, for your roof or whatever. Or no, the... For the tub? No, no, the not caulking. It was either caulking or, I don't think it was even worse. It was like, what's the shit that you do with stucco on the roof? Yeah, yeah. He, like, his, I think they stuccoed, like, a brand new Camaro or something. Oh, my like, gosh. Like, destroy the body. For, like, ruined. Well, you certainly yeah, heard you the old bitch. crazy glue on the toilet seat prank. No. Um Clattenburg taught me the uh, tape a sandwich under someone's desk prank. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> one. because so it a, starts to read. Yeah, it's a slow burn. But That's day weird. three, it's like, th- there is something unpleasant. And by day seven, and you'd never think to look up under your desk. Under your like, desk. Like, tape a ham sandwich under a guy's <laughs> desk. I mean, you could also go hardcore and tape a mackerel or something. But a ham oh, sandwich yeah. is like a slow burn. Or an egg. Yeah. That's a real slow burn. One's like really rocks, though. We also did, when we worked at Street Sense, it's also a slow burn, and it's subtle. But you put one piece of junk or like paper on a guy's desk every day to the point where <laughs> like three weeks in, he's like, why? What in the hell? Yeah, what? There's a total breaking point. Who's doing this to me? Because you're trying to keep the desk game tight. Best pranks you've ever heard. Yeah. Send us your best pranks. <laughs> Let's call it pranks for listening. When I was a- when I was a kid, I used to do something terrible with my brothers, and I was the youngest, so I'd kind of I was following the lead in a way. It was more James that was the ringleader for this, but they would put uh, stuff like uh, stuff clothes into a, like so it looks like a body, a pair of pants and a shirt, and. We lived off beside a highway, and he would throw it into the cars. No. So oh, would, my like, gosh. <laughs> That's terrible. Insane. So all of a sudden, you see this <laughs> body come across the front of your car at like 80 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst prank I've ever heard. <laughs> so bad. Drop them off a bridge. Onto no, the highway like below? From the, from the ditch, he would throw it into oh the middle of the road. Oh my gosh, that's like terrible. It so bad. It's also really dangerous. It's insanity. It's complete insanity. And this one guy, like, peeled, stopped, and then booked, kept going. So to this day... Just in case he hit a real dude? Oh my gosh. <laughs> insanity. Mike Clattenburg planted a... Uh, um, uh, uh, female entertainment item, also a town in Newfoundland, dildo, in my carry-on and wrapped it in copper wire. And <laughs> he, I noticed in hindsight, he kind of fell back a little bit and watched me go through security. And after we got through, he said, man, you're so lucky. You have no idea why. Like, what are you talking about? And he pulled it out of my bag. It didn't trigger for some reason because I guess it was copper, not metal. Yeah. That could have been heinous. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember one guy, a, a guy told me he used to put a huge rocks in a paper bag and put it on the road. How insane is that? Oh, so you'd hit what you think was a paper bag? Yes. And there'd be a huge rock in the middle of the bag. Well, I'll never forget, Young Drivers of Canada, they said <clears throat> that this kid who had his license hit, went to hit a cardboard box, and it was full of soup cans... And it got caught up under the car, and he perished because he was oh doing God. a dumb stunt. Um, hey, bud, I have to go get Indy at preschool. All right. Episode 60 is choppy, but um, we'll continue shortly. 
Okay. Okay, bye. Bye now. Where's my beer jam? jam, jam? Canadian accounts is very simple. We kind of alluded to it last week. We're going to watch videos on YouTube, give them to each other, and you have to guess how many views you think it has. This can be tricky because some things that you think not many people would have watched have millions of views. And some things that you think would be a national treasure, like a dozen people watched. I think we should also, for bonus, ask how many likes and dislikes it has. <laughs> okay. And I, I think we should go Price is Right style. So it's if you go over, that's a no, even if you're really close. Okay. Does that sound right? No, that's good. Okay. Who's going first? Well, are you saying you have to guess into a certain amount, like, if of views? Well, if we, how many did you pull? Five. Yeah. So I did the same. So round one will be we each give each other a video. Whoever comes closest to without going over scores a point. Is that fair? Like, in what? What in what sense is going over? Well, like if it has. 13,000 views, and I say 17,000 views, I went over. Oh, okay. Like, you know in the Showcase Showdown, how yeah, people sure. bet a dollar so, instead of okay, 20,000? Not, not like a win or a loss. It's a, this is like percentages. No, if you go over on your guess, mm-hmm. you're, you're out of contention for the round. If we both go over, nobody gets a point. <laughs> right? So I yeah. could actually, if you've gone over, I could guess one view, and I'd be right. Yeah. Price is right, steel styles. <laughs> Who's going first? Uh, uh, I'll go first. Okay, one more rule. If what? you go over, the one way you can redeem yourself is by guessing the number of thumbs downs bang on. <laughs> no, this is way too much information. No, it's good. It'll be very clear as we go. <laughs> If you okay. guess the number of thumbs downs bang on, you're back in the game. <laughs> you're back in the game. Because who... That just erases, like, if you're off by a million in the count. Who does that? Like, who would look up riding the bus with my sister just to give it a <laughs> thumbs down? Like, if you're looking it up, you must want to see it. Am I going first? No, I'm, I'm, I'm about to play this. You ready? Okay, and you have to tell me exactly what you searched. Because like Juno's isn't enough. I know, but that but I what if you just search the name of the thing you're about to see? Well, there's you have to trust me that I won't. Oh, I thought it's not about. I thought it doesn't matter what like the guessing. Well, that's what I'm is. saying. So you tell me exactly what the clip is. Play a bit <laughs> okay. of it, and then I'll guess how many views. Okay, it's king. It's king of Kensington theme. Oh, we could have called it ViewTube. Yeah. You can keep it can always change. Okay. That's Canadianity styles. You want to switch the Maybe it's name? Canadianity counts colon view two. <laughs> okay, go. Okay. <laughs> the great Al Waxman starring in King of Kensington. And the great Fiona Reed. <laughs> yeah. And later the great Jane Eastwood. Written by Louis Del Grande. <laughs> Produced <guy>. by <laughs> Perry Rosen, who went on to do Air Farce. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say... Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk it out. That show was on in the 70s. Most people <laughs> yeah. that remember it are probably not cruising on YouTube. <laughs> so I'm going to say... I feel like it has about 33,000 views, but to be safe, I'm going to say 26,000 views. 26,000, final answer. 56,729. Wow. Okay, so I'm still in because I didn't go over. Oh, my God. Here's your clip. You ready? (laughs) It's CBC's video hits with Samantha Taylor. She's teeing up who's coming up on the show today. I think you'll like it. You ready? So listen first, then guess how many views. Hi, and welcome to Video Hit, Canada's number one video show. I'm Samantha Taylor, and on today's show, I've got Janet Jackson, Patti LaBelle, with help from Mike McDonald, 
Talk Circle, and One to One. Later in the show, I'll tell you how you can win a trip to see Honeymoon Suite at Expo 86 in our big prize contest. But right now... How about that? <laughs> yeah, that's tough. You I'm can win a chance to see Honeymoon Suite at Expo 86. <laughs> that is legit. That is legit. Okay. How many views? Fif- uh, 5,600. <laughs> 5,600. <laughs> I, th- I don't know why it struck me so funny. I thought you were going to say 1,000. No. 5,600 is, it's sort of heartbreaking. It's 52,678. Oh, I was way off. So I, I get a point then. You do. Guess how many thumbs downs that has. Uh, <laughs> like, um, like 30? <laughs> <laughs> that ratio is so out of whack. Like, of the 6,000 people that watched it, 30 was like, that's this garbage. Like, what are you doing watching it then if you don't like it so much? <laughs> There was only one sour puss that gave a thumbs think, down. If you, see, if you happen to see it on like the, the column, you know, when you were in an era and you're looking for a, you could be <laughs> someone's looking for a journey song and that's just on the side all of a sudden they click on it. I know, but what's they going on in your life that thumb, you're... Because they, they're offended, so they fire a thumbs down if they don't like it. What's going on in your life that you're angry enough, though, to <laughs> give someone like that a thumbs like down? <laughs> Everybody's like that online. Online is just like... Brutal. Craziest people in the world. All right, I'm going to give you a clip first in round two. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is Chris Shepard being interviewed by Kim Clark Champness on New Music TV. Here it comes. Hey, Chris, when you started off being a club DJ, did you ever think it would end up with all this and the success that you've had? Sure. No, it wasn't really ever about that. It was it was about the the feeling of the music and just an opportunity to try and project the sounds that we wanted to project. Yeah, nah, it wasn't about the success. It wasn't about that at all, man. No, not at all. How many views does Kim Clark Jamness interviewing Chris <laughs> Shepard on New Music TV have? Thirty two hundred. <laughs> Um, no, 210, uh, 10 down, thumbs down. <laughs> no, 25,500 views, three thumbs down. <laughs> um, okay, that's the game. You have to guess the number of views and the number of thumbs down. Okay. <laughs> I did, Chris Shepard. This I presented, is how hockey was invented. Yeah. I presented on the Junos with Chris Shepard as Chris Shepard, and the bit was, we've come out, I have Cinnamon Bun Head too, and I say like, tonight is all about flipping the light, fantastic, we're spinning wheels across the sky and the beats that make it last forever, and I have this big 40 second rant, and he finally turns to me and goes, that's a bit much, don't you think? (laughs) He was a real good sport about me doing Chris Shepard on the Junos. He also was really a pioneer of that genre, wasn't he? He sure was. He was a man of the clubs. What was the thing called? Love Inc. Yeah, and then he was like doing his DJ stuff. I don't. I don't know. He's probably. Then he was doing radio too. Uh, twin discs of steel. How could you, how could you not with a <laughs> with a voice like that? Love Inc. Where are you from? <laughs> London. <laughs> Ontario. <laughs> Where are you from? Brookhampshire, outside of Aurelia. <laughs> Where are you from? Niagara on the lake. 
<laughs> he can make anywhere sound sexy. Brandon Manitoba. But he probably calls it Manitoba. <laughs> Brandon Manitoba. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Manitoba should get him to do the voiceovers for their commercials. <laughs> Come to Brandon Manitoba all summer long. Hampshire, Sh- Hampshire Square, near Shelburne. <laughs> Where are you from? Vancouver. <laughs> Moncton. <clears throat> Oh, man, that's great. I want to hear him just read a list of tour dates for Love, Inc. St. John's, Deer Lake, Ganda. Um, okay, so your differential. <laughs> we, have to do a li- we have to do a list of all the, all the, all the Canadian celebrities with a hardcore accent <laughs> from other places. Kamloops. <laughs> um, your differential was 25... 25- Thousand five hundred minus thirty two hundred, so yours was roughly twenty two thousand. So okay, you, play my video, you, and I, if I can make a better differential, no, I get a you, point. You can do all all three in a room together, Alan Fruit. Can't <laughs> <laughs> Mark Holmes <laughs> and Chris Shepard, and they all oh talk about growing gosh. up in Toronto with those accents. The Fruit. <laughs> The fruit. <laughs> I remember at the Scarborough Town Centre. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever park at the Giant Tiger at the Scarborough Town Centre? <laughs> I do, yeah. I remember it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They used to have deals on eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> They also had great quilted vests that you could wear in fall time with your roots boots. I do, yeah. Do you remember the Catelli bats you get at the Blue Jays games <laughs> in the 80s? With Kelly Gruber? <laughs> it was a great time to be alive. <laughs> do you guys remember going to the CNE? <laughs> Remember the the rush hats? <laughs> oh, Canada! <laughs> Here to sing, Oh, Canada! Mark Holmes, Alan Frew, and Chris Shepard. <laughs> oh, Canada! Our home and native land. <laughs> True patriot love, yeah. <laughs> In all thy son's command. <laughs> I I can't He's, beef with Chris Shepard. He was always awesome. He came on John of Vision and was great. The kids just loved him. Remember, didn't he have like Much Music Presents, Chris Shepard's dance mix? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah, yeah. It was that. He'd, have the, he'd always show up at the dance parties. You ready for yours? Yeah, hit me. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's the Irish Rover Irish Rovers intro. Wow. <laughs> you ready for this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Wasn't that a party? <laughs> I think I'm gonna die. Me, oh, me, oh, my, wasn't that a party? Party with Might the Rovers. Been the gin. 46,000. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you just nailed it. What? That's exactly what it no. is. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, come on, 46, I went 000. way over. 46,000. Holy cow. You just crushed it. First thought, best thought, as the Buddhists say, that popped into my head. How about likes? Or dislikes? I'm going to say there's 212 likes, and I'm going to say there's four dislikes. 
No, there's 66 likes and only one dislike. Maybe the game should be called Dyslexia. (laughs) Um, Wow. They're the radio head of those bands. Nobody dislikes the Rovers. Nobody dislikes the Rovers. Now all I can do is talk like Chris Shepard. (laughs) <laughs> Chris Shepard talking about watching that intro and he was like six we're gonna pour some melted steel into big buckets that light up bake it in the oven at 360 double the butter and release some beets um here is here is the night heat TV show full oh. theme HQ audio full scene full theme Oh, full scene. It's the theme okay. of the 80s show Night Heat coming full at you. Theme. Wonder uh, if you will survive in city. Performed by Dominic Troiano. How many views? How many dislikes? Twenty thousand views. Twenty. Six dislikes. Twenty thousand views is your guess. Yeah, it's twenty-seven. That's good. Oh, I'm in the ballpark. It's a good you guess. Held yours. You won again. Well, no, we're in the next round, aren't we? I don't know. You 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 getting points all over the place is all I know. I think this is the start of round three. I think you just set the table to steal a point. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Um, Are you gosh, ready? Gosh darn it. Oh. My phone's ringing, bud. Your phone's ringing, bud. What should I do? Should I answer it hot? Answer it hot. Okay, hang on. He's going to answer it hot. I think I should have put on this song early. Can't even find the darn thing, bud. Let's not sweat it. Don't even know why we have a landline anymore. Are you ready for yours? Yes. Okay, here it comes. <clears throat> I rhyme the world in 80 days. Kish. You got it. That's, uh, yeah. Around the world, around the world, oh yeah. The girl at Subway happened to be able to sing, so we brought her on the song. Is that true? No, I'm just guessing by the vocal. You know what? It's not often that a hook in a rap song drives me crazy. I don't like the hook. I think he has pretty good flow. But it's the the first two, I run the world, baby, I run oh, the world, no. oh yeah, are okay, but the third, I run the world, baby. <laughs> no, that's really bad. That's where she loses me. Um, I'm going to say, <clears throat> dang, I'm going to say 14,000 views, and I'm going to say 12 dislikes. <laughs> <laughs> Eight. 8,200 views. Also, I'm over. Okay. 34 likes, 3 dislikes. 3 dislikes. <clears throat> um, oh, that's the best part right there. Switched off. That's a point for you, bud. Oh, yeah? I wonder what ever happened to that guy. Oh, my family's home. And Henry's going nuts. Let's take a break on TNT. <laughs> we'll be right back with Dyslexia. Canadianity counts. Perfect. Hang on. Fucking right, eh? <laughs> Okay, not that score matters, but it's 2-1 for me. You're going to yeah. start this next round. Yeah, I picked uh, the great Louis Del Grande. He came up earlier as a writer. Yeah. And King of Kensington, but now it's his own show, Seeing Things, the intro to th- Seeing Things. Wow. Starring Louis Del Grande. Any 
It's one of your finest moments again on Trailer Park Boys to have for calling Leahy Louis Del Grande looking moth. Looking map. Is he um Who's singing? Randy Bachman? <laughs> oh I know, eh? it's brutal. He's got that hardcore. Yeah, no. Whatever what that it, music is, is that a, blues? What? Whatever that theme is. Like I know that Budad will do that. <laughs> it's more do that. like do more like a doobies kind of thing. I don't which is like kind of blues. Rock and rolly. Same ball. Maybe it's rhythm and blues. Um, anyway, the Seeing Things opening title sequence has... <laughs> you got to guess the uh, views and the likes and dislikes. I'm going to guess it has, because it kind of has its place in pop culture um, it's, in Canada. It's a pretty cheesy song, though, boy. Yeah. I'm going to guess yeah. 8,000 views, 4 dislikes, and 12 likes. 2,400 views. Aww. Nine likes. No dis. <laughs> no dislikes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. No dislikes. There you go. Okay, so I blew myself up. I'm out of contention. This you went is over again. Yeah. So now this, we're even. Two two. Well, no. This is your. This, oh, this is, is my your chance to, chance to steal. Myself. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> to get back in the show here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this pick. The Canadian tenors with David Foster performing Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen. So <laughs> I've heard there was a secret chord David played and it pleased the Lord but you don't really care for music do you? Should be a big busy piano part at some point? All I want in the world is to see your face hearing the Canadian tenors and David Foster. Be a do 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 well, let me see. Here's a cutaway of, of the Foss. See what he's doing. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's having a tinkle. Oh, David Foster's having a tinkle. On, on the ivories. He's adding a high part to the melody that doesn't really need to be there. <laughs> Shedding up the place like an elephant. <laughs> well, he's um, he's spreading some magical fairy dust the way he is wont to do. How many views does the Canadian tenors... Ver- oh, hang on a sec. Here's a big, long cutaway of the Foss. Let's see what he's doing. That's right, Jonathan. You got to keep remember, it simple. Remember gotta the big keep, piano break like, and uh, he's Hallelujah. Like, you got to keep it. You got to keep it simple, guys. But he still won't stop playing the whole time. But you yeah. got to keep it simple. All these notes popping out of the parts. <laughs> <laughs> he gets paid by the note, bud. How many views? How many dislikes? I'm gonna say like uh, three hundred thousand views. Ninety-two thousand. What? 92,000. Damn. I went yeah. over just like you did. So I nobody blew gets it up. A point. Well, wait a sec. If you guess the right number of dislikes, oh, okay. you can get your point. Uh, 15 dislikes. Darn it. It's five. Damn it. Um, Pretty barf so and I can't win them. now. I'm out. Why? I still have one point and you've got two and it's the last round. I know, but you can tie it up. Oh, yeah. So who's going first? Do you want me to go first this time? Then we'd have to have a tiebreaker. What? I'll go first so you can steal the point. Okay, yeah, so it's more dramatic that way. Mr. Dress Up Christmas episode. Take a listen. How great is that jam? 
It's one of the best. One of the best. So that was the 1995 isn't, isn't the original, Christmas wasn't the episode. Origi- wasn't the original that Glenn Gould, didn't he write that? Did he really? I don't know if that's a fairy tale. I want it to be true, but I thought that's how that jam came about. Um, I didn't know that. This is the 1995 Mr. Dress Up Christmas episode. Just so you have all the information, it's been uploaded by a uh, handle called Retro Tie, the Pulse of Nostalgia. So it's not like CBC official. How many views? Oh, man. Uh, 80,000? Darn it. 54,000. Oh, I went over again. It's your chance to get the point by well, guessing the correct would, number of dislikes. It's surprising. Like this is is uh, deserves to get the beatdowns. I don't know, if, uh, four. I guess that's why I picked it. There are nine dislikes. Oh, what kind of monster <laughs> dislikes hell? Mr. Dress Up and Christmas? It's people. Someone who doesn't like Christmas, probably. What kind of sick bastards? All right, so this is a victory lap. Um, yeah, hit me with the last one. This is definitely a victory lap. This is a SCTV skit, Half Wits, hmm. which is one of the classic bits of all time. Here's John Candy here off the top. Darren Peel. Darren, good to have you back. Thank you, Alec, and we'd like to have you over for dinner real soon. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's the, uh, the Half Wits game show. It's like a Jeopardy, but they're real dim. <laughs> now, Darren, you were telling us you're in machine parts. Is that correct? That is correct, Alec. I search ball bearings for a living. I have two pails that work. In one pail, I'll put good ball bearings, and in the other, I'll put the bad ones. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a demanding job. It is for me. Now, Darren, you're a family man, is that correct? That is correct, Alec. I've got two wonderful parents. I have a mother, <laughs> father, and I have another brother whose name is Darren. What I meant to say was uh, you, you have a family of your own? I don't follow you. <laughs> do you have a wife? You have That's children. really funny. Your own. Your own family. Sure I do. Sure I do. I have a wonderful wife and, and two boys named Frank. Well, good to have you here. Good to you. Thank you. Sure you. I do. What? This is John Candy just killing it. 32,000 views. You're way off. There's less. under, at least. Oh, really? 332,700 views. I mean, that's great. It's a great skit. As it should be. Um, fun game, bud. As I'm looking like as I'm looking at some of the clips in the margin, there's a clip from Big Comfy Couch that has six hundred and eighty thousand views. Yeah, the kids stuff are sneaky. Yeah. Here's a here's here's a Alec it's it's like Eugene Levy playing Alex Trebek, who's uh you know, such a classic Canadianity character. And Martin Short just kills it with this creepy Lawrence Orbach guy. Yes, Orbach. I, thought I don't care what you do. Thank you. Now, Lawrence, you were telling us you're still in school. Right, oh, Alex. Postgraduate <laughs> work? No, high school. I'm having some degree of difficulty getting through high school. I see. Well, good well, to have you here. I'm sure you will, Lawrence, and uh, because I have certain goals in life, I feel compelled to complete. Very, very good. One of oh. which is becoming a circuit court judge. Good. Good to have ambition. And the second is perhaps playing professional hockey. Good to have you, Lawrence. And, uh, good luck to you. Right, Alex. Then now it's time. Do you know what my favorite part is? It's such a little thing, but someone having trouble getting through high school would not use the phrase "I'm having a degree of difficulty." That's what's really funny about it. Yeah, because he has a slight eloquence, but he's an absolute yeah. total stump. Way ahead of its time, wasn't it? Yeah, but clearly still loved on the YouTubes with the hundreds of thousands of views. That's and great. Only 31 dislikes for that amount of views is pretty 31? 1,100 likes. What? Oh, well, that's... What the is wrong is with people, impressive. though? I don't know. Kids are like, yes, I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, I bet the kids are quick to dislike. Yeah, I want to watch another unboxing video. Are you um? Are you inside and cozy today? 
Oh man, big time. I'm battened and uh, rattened. Because it's this, Bad this News like, Bears, right? Yeah, it's like the <laughs> Ronnie Styles. Like, remember when he was on the show and talking about the big ice everywhere? What's cracking? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be one of those kind of nights. There's really? a lot of uh, frozen, like freezing rain, that, and then all of a sudden snowing, and then rain, and then snowing, and it's just going to keep going. Apparently, it's going to keep burning along all night. So, Kind of cozy, yeah. though. Like, if you have the food that you need and the power doesn't go out, it's kind of fun. It's not so fun if the power does go out, but... No. Uh, the other thing is this is that kind of snow that's super heavy. So you could break your back instantly or have a jammer. Yeah. If you think you can just fire the snow everywhere, trying to do it at all quick. Yeah, you can't do that, like man. Dro dropping like a rock. That's Don't go having a jammer, rock. bud. Huh? Don't go having a jammer on me, will you? No. No. Um, I know you don't want to have a jammer as much as I don't want you to have one. When we were on tour, as we say in the East Coast, yeah, we uh, discovered that Randy Bachman uh, crafted the holiday classic, Taking Care of Christmas, oh, yeah. which we thought usurped um, Corey Hart's Rudolph as the worst Christmas song ever. If you haven't heard it, Agreed. go now and listen. Taking care of Christmas. It sounds like it was, um, uh, you know, it didn't take a long time to lay down. So that kind of you gotta like take us through you if if you were him and like where, how he came about doing it. Guys, here's what we're gonna do. You know, taking care of business. Um, I've just tweaked a couple words here and there. Uh, business when you you first hear it, kind of sounds like Christmas. So um, what I did is I replaced the word business with Christmas and then replaced some of the other lyrics with like Santa sleigh and gifts and um, excited girls and boys. We'll take a crack through it, but we might as well roll tape on the first rehearsal. And who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. I, mean, I think that was the pep talk to the band. Remember he, he quit uh, the Guess Who at the Fillmore on, on a gig in like 69. Be because why? He just had it, I guess. I don't know. And the because the Stones thing. wanted him. Oh, that's no Zeppelin. It was Zeppelin that wanted him. So all that to say, it kind of sent us down that's what he said. yet another guess who hole, wormhole. And Timbo, our bud from the Arkells who puts the show together, sent Jeremy a link to the videos on um, Burton Cummings' Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's kind of a, a video diary as the kids would say. And sometimes He's being nice enough to the fans and letting them in on some classic songs from back in the day. It's like you get to peek behind the curtain a little bit. Yeah. Um, and there's a bod taking the videos. And he's often wearing the, maybe the same jean shirt and, uh, yeah, and everyone, his birthday is, it appears to be either new year's Eve or the first of January. And some of them are, uh, as he puts it, kind of reflective videos about the state of his life and the state of the year. And, you know, if you have several hours and, and want to get to know Burton a little better, go on his Facebook page and watch videos like this one. You've suggested we play a bit of little Eva, right? <laughs> it begins with kind of a, a comedy bit whereby he doesn't know the camera is there. Take a listen. Oh, oh, hi there. <laughs> Welcome back to the club. I'm your host for the evening, Burton Cummings. We all remember little Eva. She had the, the original fabulous version of the locomotion, not that one by Grand Funk produced by Todd Rundgren. Little Eva had the original one. She was on Dimension Records, along with the Cookies and Carol King. She was one of the Dimension girls, and it, it was great. Everybody's doing a brand new dance now. Come on, baby, do the motion. <laughs> 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 Why is there a 
bird on the keyboard. <laughs> why why are they zooming in on his barrel? <laughs> Did you like the like going down melodically there in the chorus? <laughs> no commotion. Do you want to hear that part again? Yeah. Not that oh, one by Grand Funk go. produced by Todd Rundgren. Little Eva had the original one. She was on Dimension <laughs> Records along with the Cookies and Carol King. She was one of the Dimension girls. And it, it was great. Everybody's doing a brand new dance now. Come on, baby. It's a Put super it close up of his Those face for Walker Shortbread. Good talking to you, bud. We'll take it out on Burton's yeah, version of Little Eva's follow up to Locomotion. Good chatting, bud. Good mind. talking. I'll talk to you soon. Walker, Get bread, back to the keys, Burton. Little Eva. Here we go. Put the two together. Oh, what 